Hi everyone, welcome to the third module of Verilog HDL Crash Course. In this module, we are going to cover Verilog HDL data types and their associated concepts with proper examples. So first of all, let's see how almost all kind of data types in Verilog HDL stores the value. So in Verilog, actually almost all data types stores the values in one of the four format. Either a 0, a 1, a x which is a unknown logic value or a high impedance value. So almost all the data types in Verilog SDL will consist these basic four values. Now let's see. So in this module basically we are going to cover only the important data types used in Verilog SDL. And let's discuss the first type of data type in Verilog HDL which is wire. So a wire is nothing but it represents a physical wire connection in a circuit. And basically it is used to connect gates or modules. So it is just a connecting wire which is used to connect different different gates or modules. A value of a wire can be read but not assigned to in a procedural block or in a function. This is very important point here. A wire type of data type can be read but it cannot get assigned any value in a procedural block which are always or initial and in a function as well. That means a wire type of data type cannot be used at left side in a statement in procedural blocks as well as in a function. So suppose we have a always block and here suppose we are assigning x is equal to y. So here this x cannot be a type of wire data type. Although this y can be a wire data type or it can also be a register data type. But the x can never be a wire data type in procedural blocks as well as in any, in any function. A wire does not store its value. So in a procedural block basically we cannot drive a wire data type. So where can we drive a wire data type? A wire data type must be driven by a continuous assignment statement which is nothing but using a assign keyword. So guys always remember a assignment to a wire data type can happen using a continuous assignment statement which is nothing but a, by using uh, uh, the keyword assign. Now let's see about the syntax of wire data type. So to declare a data as a wire we have to use wire and then the variable name. So it can be a scalar as well as it can be a vector. So here is an example where we have a variable a, b and c which are type of wire and then we have a 8 bit vector which is data and that is also a type of wire. So a wire is nothing but you can consider as a bundle of bus, a bundle of cable actually you can consider where this cable has 5 wires. And now any wire type of data type can be driven using a continuous assignment statement which is assign statement and it can never be driven within a procedural block or a function. Now let's see the next data type which is register. All the left hand side of expression in procedural block or in a function are always register data type. So as we discussed in the previous slide, when we have always and here x equal to y. So this x should always have a data type as register. Here the y can be a register or, or a wire as well. But the x, the data type of the x should always be a register type. And register data type must be used for latches, flip flops and memories. So here is also a very important point. For latches, flip flops and memories, definitely we have to use a register type of data type. But 
a register data type can also be used for other combinational circuits and that completely depend on the style of writing a procedural block we will study this in next modules but here just always remember that to model the latches flip flops and memories we need to have a register type of data type but a register type of data type can also be used to model combinational circuits and how how it's possible that is possible based on the style of writing the procedural block so let's see the syntax of the register data type so here we have a one bit register data type so this is a variable and its type is register we can also have a vector so here we have a vector variable and its type is register so here is an example you can declare it like this register a register b and this is a vector data of type register now let's see the input output and in out the characteristic of input output and in out keywords in Verilog with respect to data type so these keywords which are input output and in out basically declare the input output and bidirectional ports of a module or a task and here the important point is the input and in out ports are of type wire so an input port whenever we are declaring a port as an input port its type is wire the in out port will also have a data type wire and the output port can be configured to be of type wire or a register the output port can be a wire or it can also be a register now where to use a wire type and where to use a register type that again completely depend on our design what is our design or and how we are going to basically uh, write the STL code for our design as I told in previous modules if we are modeling any circuit using procedural blocks that means in procedural blocks the left hand side variable of a expressions is always has a data type register so suppose if you are modeling a multiplexer and while modeling a multiplexer if you are using the behavioral modeling style then the, regist the, the multiplexer output we need to declare as a register data type so we will see more examples as we move forward in this crash course but just remember here that the output can be a wire data type or as a register data type depending on our design and how we are basically modeling the design here is the syntax so this is an input port it, its data type will be wire this is also input, input port it is a vector input port its data type is also going to be a wire this is a, an output so its out its data type can be a wire as well as a register and the input out in out port which is also going to be a wire type so here is an example input we have a b and a and b b port which will be of wire type and then we have the output c and d d is a vector so this is also going to be so so this is going to be either a wire or a register data type so if you want to declare a port a output port as a register we can declare it like this so here the output keyword will be telling that this is the output port and it is a its data type so default data type if we don't declare it as a register then its data type default is going to be a wire but to override that we have to write we have to basically declare this as a register data type. So hope this is clear now let's see a integer data type so integers are general purpose variables and they are mainly used for for loops and for as a parameters or as a constant value so while writing the for loop basically we need some uh, variable for to check some conditions so that variable can be a integer type of variable and implicitly they are type of register data type so so here's a point to notice implicitly they are type of a register but they store data as a signed number however explicitly declared register types store data as unsigned it will get clear when we go through the example and the default size of an integer is 32 bit and if they hold a constant value during synthesis synthesizer will adjust them to the minimum width needed at compilation 
For example, you have a integer constant which is decimal value seven. So when it will be converted into a three bit value, which is one one five. So this is what the meaning of this statement. So what is the syntax? The syntax of this is a variable and the data type is integer. And let's see the example here. So here we are declaring a variable a which is integer. So by default it will be a 32 bit integer value. But during synthesis, depending on the value of this a, the synthesizer will basically translate it to the minimum width needed at compilation. So here you can see if you have a variable b and its value is 63. That is a constant integer value. So now, what will be the what will be the width of b? The width of b will be seven bit because here the decimal constant sixty three can be represented by a seven bit value. So hope this is, is clear. Now let's see the two other important data types which are basically not used in SDL design but it is used in simulation and. Actually speaking, it is used in mixed signal verification or analog verification. So the supply zero and supply one are two data type, which are basically kind of a wire data type, but they have a fixed value. So here a supply zero is nothing but a wire and which is basically connected to ground. The supply one is also nothing but a wire which is connected to power. So how we can declare them here using the supply zero and supply one, we can declare a logic zero variable, which is type of wire, but it is basically connected to ground and using supply one, we can declare a variable, which is basically connected to power or has a value one. So this is how we can declare them a ground wire of type supply zero, a power wire of supply one. Now let's see the next data type which is time. A time is a 64 bit quantity and it is mostly used in conjunction with the dollar time system task. So we will see all kind of system tasks when we go through the system task module. But here just a heads up that a dollar time is a system task which can be used to get basically the current simulation time. So in simulation when you want to debug something and when you want to see okay uh, uh, this particular uh, activity is happening at what time in the simulation. So we can use a dollar time system task, task which will basically dump the uh, current simulation value. So to use the system task, this system task returns a value which is type of time and that is nothing but a 64 bit quantity. So we have to declare a variable of, of type time. So here if you see the current simulation time is of time of type time and this will get the value current value which is written by the dollar time system task. Now let's see the next data type which is nothing but parameter. So parameters allows constants like word length to be defined symbolically in one place. For example, in our Verilog SDL code, if we have to use a same constant value, value multiple times that constant value we can define using a parameter and then we can use that parameter at all the places. So in future also if that constant value is going to be changed we just have to change the parameter value and it will be reflected at all the places in the design. So there are three ways to declare a parameter. We can declare a single parameter using the parameter keyword so this is a PAR1 parameter, it is a parameter and its value is nothing but value 1. If you have to declare multiple parameters, we can use a single parameter keyword and we can write like this. So here the pair 2 is the first parameter, its value 2 and then using the comma, we can declare the parameter 3 which is has value 3 and like this we can declare as many parameters as we want. Now suppose if the parameter is in bit format, so we can also declare the parameter in a bit format where we have a parameter variable which is param4 and suppose it is a 3 bit value then it we, we can have to down to 0 
and its type is parameter and the value is value 4 that can be 3 tick b 0 0 0 for example so these are the three ways to declare a parameter for example here you see the number of bits so number of bits is nothing but 8 here the parameter now we are declaring multiple parameters so here the parameter add which has a value 2 tick b 0 0 then we have a subtract which has a value 2 tick b 0 1 and then we have a semicolon here so this line will show that there are two parameters which is add and subtract and then we can also declare a parameter in a bit format when the last state is nothing but a 3 bit variable a 3 bit parameter not a variable it is not a variable it is a parameter which has the fixed constant value so it is a 3 bit constant value and the constant value is nothing but 3 tick b 1 1 1 so if there is a constant which is repeatedly used many places in a design that constant basically we can replace with the parameter value and we can define the parameter value at a single place so in future also if we have to change that constant value we don't have to go and change at every places we can just change the parameter value and it will be reflected everywhere so guys here we conclude the third module of our Verilog SDL crash course which was on Verilog data types hope each and every concept on the data type is clear to you if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also if you like the video please hit the like button and do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as i upload the next video thank you very much